would mean power, nourishment, sustenance. To be able to even to grow your own food gives you that sense of belonging. And so food for me is very powerful and it should be a right for all people. My name is Karen Washington. I tell people I'm a farmer. I grow food. I feed people body, mind, and spirit. And I've been growing food for over 38 years and counting. I think it is a gift to be able to grow food and to feed people. So I try to do that each and every day. I have run the gamut of organizing community gardens, being part of an educational school called Farm School, uh, starting a conference called Black Urban Growers. Welcome to the farmer's market. Get your fresh vegetables. We grow them, you eat them. I just want to try to put a dent in hunger and poverty because, you know, we live in the United States, the greatest country in the world, and yet there's hunger and poverty. And I just, I don't understand it. So I'm out there continue to fight that battle. We never, never turn away anyone who's hungry. So yeah, if you're hungry and you need food, this is the place you need to be. I had great memories growing up uh, with family of four. It was me, my brother, my father, and uh, my mother. We lived in the projects, Jacob Reese Houses, 10th Street and Avenue D. And I had such a great childhood. We didn't even know what hunger or poverty was all about. My mom was a good cook. She was a slamming good cook. And there are certain things that you look forward to as a black person that had to have the collard greens, mac and cheese. I think the bug for growing food got to me when I moved to the Bronx. I bought a house, had a backyard, didn't know what to do with it. And then across the street was an empty lot. Got the nudge with neighbors and turned those empty lots into community gardens. And I decided I wanted to grow three things, a tomato, collard greens, and eggplant. And it was a tomato that changed my world. It was red, it was juicy, and what? I wanted to grow everything after that. And what it did, it just changed the complexion of the neighborhood. So you no longer were surrounded by garbage and debris. You were surrounded by flowers and trees and it made your neighborhood welcoming. It, 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 was, it became a safe haven, especially for our elders and for our children. And I think for so long doing this work, we have lost the framework of agriculture. We have lost the culture of growing food and community gardens were the essence of that. Are you hungry? New York City now has over 400 community gardens. And then I think what the major change that I've seen having community gardens, but school gardens. My farm, my heart is Rise and Root Farm. So it's four women. We come from community gardens. So our trademark is that we traded our Metro cars for tractors. We're in our ninth year. We are in Chester, New York, which is the black dirt region, literally black dirt. So we grow the best vegetables and the best herbs. So it has been a blessing because there is that relationship from our past of community gardens and urban agriculture, now rural agriculture, but we never left that connection. Those tomatoes, how do you eat them? Just slice you them. Just, and eat them regular? Just eat them regular. So we still grow food for people in New York City. All right, have a blessed day. You too, darling. As a matter of fact, every year we've been able to plant the starts for all the community gardens in New York City. So we have community days once a month so that people in the, in the city can come up and see exactly what we're doing. I grow food, I feed people's body and mind. I started to question the food system and I started to look at neighborhoods like mine and see the food that was in my neighborhood and my friends who are white to go in their neighborhoods and see how their food was. And I started to be very, very vocal and really got into advocacy. So I'm here today because I got a message to bring that I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. But I'm no longer going to stand for the fact that four companies are controlling our food system. The food system is two tiers, haves and have nots. And then I started to peel back the food system and say, you know, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's a caste system based on the color of your skin, 
how much money you make, and where you live. Hi, everybody. So I'm the farmer here at the Garden of Happiness. How many people eat healthy food? What are you not allowed to do? Excellent, eat junk. Come on, let's go see the chicken. Yay! 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 They always mention that people in low-income neighborhoods live in food deserts. And that that term, food desert, just didn't sit well with me because we got food. We got the junk food. We got the processed food. We got the fast food. What we don't have is healthy food options. And I felt that by saying food desert, you really wasn't getting at the heart of the problem. And so I coined the term food apartheid because wait a second, what? All of a sudden people's ears started perking up eyes. Like what is this term? And I coined that term because I wanted people to really take a hard look at the food system. So you know what happens when people eat a lot of stuff with sugar? You feel like get like kids. Diabetes? Diabetes, that's a big word, diabetes. And so for me, I challenge the food system. And I say the only way the food system is going to change is taking away the power of people who for so long have power over others back into the hands of the communities. I'm not gonna stand for the fact that the farmer, the family farmer is being pushed to the side so someone could be making money that's poisoning my people. People always ask me, you know, why do I do this work? And I speak to the ancestors. I said somehow the ancestors set me here to do something for, for them not to be forgotten. You know, I can always remember in my head this sort of voice, Karen, don't, don't forget us, don't forget us. And I want to make sure that young people don't forget their ancestral lineage. We were the ones that put the seeds in the ground. We were the ones that fed this nation. How many people eat food? They stand on the shoulders that of people Excellent. who built this country. And then I tell them, look at the color of your skin. The color of your skin is soil. You come from a great agrarian group of people. So embrace land, go back to the land, have that relationship to the land that I always preach, especially to young people. I, I'll tell you a perfect example. So I was speaking at an event, this woman and her seven-year-old, she said, you know, Miss Washington, we know what my daughter said to me. She says, Ma, one day when I get old, I want to be a farmer. And I never thought in my lifetime that a little black girl would say to her mother, I want to be a farmer. And her mother was, was, was so happy. And I knew I was on the right path of doing something extraordinary. After 2020, we got hit hard financially. It was time to close the door. That's where the Black Farmers Fund came in and they assist us so that we can keep going. The organization I have now that's driving me is Black Farmer Fund. First of all, in the United States, Black farmers own only 1% of farmland. And for me, living in New York, out of 57,000 farmers, only 139 are Black. The average farmer here in New York makes white farmer $47,000, a Black farmer maybe $900. And so we started this Black Farmer Fund back in 2019. Our first year, we were able to amass over a million dollars. And now we're going for $20 million, and why not? And so with the Black Farmer Fund, we want to meet the farmer and the business where they are. So we'll ask the farmer, what is it we can do to help you succeed? That's number one. And then, you know what, we're gonna make it so that periods of time during the year when you don't farm, you don't have to pay. I am enjoying my life. I have a great life. You know, when you're out there on the field and you see what you've grown, you give the almighty, the creator thanks for allowing you to be part of an industry of giving back. It's something for me about growing food and putting my hands in the soil. And so I thank the opportunity for allowing me to be a steward of the land so that I can give back uh, to the land and to nature.